All right, so welcome back everybody. This is part three of our pool deck build right here. And in today's episode, we're gonna start on the composite decking and that's what we're gonna cover. Let me take the next 60 seconds for all the people that's been watching at this point, go over some stuff that I did off camera. You're probably already noticing it. And then we're gonna dive right into the composite decking. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and painted the bottom wood and post here. We may not enclose that in. So we had some house paint left over, some Sherwin-Williams good exterior stuff. I like the way it looks. By the way, people keep noticing one bolt. Don't forget there's a ton of other fasteners in there. I am not done fastening to the post. I have more than enough to hold my structure up right now. I've got to make a hardware store run to get more bolts. Also off camera, I put all the blocking in here and out there on the deck, making it very strong. That blocking right here will keep my joists from twisting. I've got them relatively straight, straight enough. And I went ahead and attached every single 12 inch on center joist to that extra support that I have all the way underneath that's also sitting on a six by six post. Not at all required, but makes an extremely strong deck right now. I messed up and y'all caught it in the last episode. Thank y'all. I've always said I am just a homeowner trying to build his own stuff. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Check your local rules. I should have doubled up this ledger board right here, but I am not even the least concerned. Somebody had a great idea. I put another six by six post in right here, notched it, and this ledger board is sitting on top of it. There is no more than a three and a half foot span on this two by eight open span. Extremely strong. If I had to double it up, you see a lot of people will run 10 and 12 feet before they'll rest on another post. Well, I'm not doing that here at all. All right, so I've got to set me up a little workstation right here to make all my cuts. And those of you that's watched the channel for a while heard me absolutely brag on these saw horses right here. I've even given some way as gifts because I love them so much. It's the Bora Speed Horses. They set up just that quick. You can lock two by fours in on the side to make a full work table and workbench. If you're looking for something like this, I picked mine up off of Amazon. I'll throw a link down in the description. All right, so we're gonna whip up a couple jigs real quick. I'm just taking some scrap two by eights that I have in my scrap pile over here and some other, well, two by six, certain types of blocks. This makes sense in a second but I need an extra set of holding hands whenever I'm putting my trim boards up to the edge. Before we notch them to go around the post, they're kind of out here in thin air wanting to fall off of the porch itself. And I have nobody else to help me hold. You could also screw a board into the side of your porch. Mine's already painted. I don't want to put any more holes in there. I have to fill and patch up. So we're going to make a little clamp method right here, but all you need is scrap lumber. And I'm going to screw two pieces together so I get three inch lip right here. So it makes sense in just a second. All right, now we'll take some of these six inch clamps and these couple of throw them together jigs. Now we'll come over here and clamp these onto the side. Now I have a three inch lip outside, did not damage my boards right here and it'll help support this piece. I'll show you here in just a second once I cut it and need to come up here and do some trimming for my notching. All right, so here's my little workstations. I got them all over the place with supports because the bad thing about this composite is it's extremely heavy and well, it's like working with wet spaghetti noodles. It's floppy all over the place. And the trim boards that I have to get are in 20 foot boards only. So extremely difficult to work with by yourself. You gotta get creative. Now, when I talk about trim boards, look at the side of this. You can special order your boards there is no groove because I'm doing hidden fasteners. Now on my trim boards, I'm actually gonna have to put fasteners through the top, but you want a nice smooth edge. That's why I'm framing out the entire outside edge of the porch right here, because I don't want cut ends of my regular boards on the very edge. It just does not look professional, doesn't look good at all. So I'm doing what's called picture framing. You know, the nice frame that's around the outside of the picture frame that has a nice clean edge. It's exactly what we're doing here. So whenever I cut my boards and butt them to this on the inside, you don't see those nasty cut edges. So you've got to get your framing down first. Well, at least in my particular instance. Some decks that have a nice clean stopping edge that don't have the post and everything else, you could technically run your deck boards, trim them all in a straight line, and then cap everything with your picture frame doesn't work out too good with all the notching of the post and stuff that I'm doing right here. 
So real quick, we decided to go with a weather shield decking here. A lot of people just called composite decking Trex because that's probably the most popular brand in the industry. However, if you look at Trex, the stuff from Lowe's, for example, especially the entry level Trex, well, if you look on the ends of it, for example, look at this right here. It is pretty much all composite. If you look on the end of Trex, it looks like, well, sawdust because there's a lot of that impregnated in here, but it's also got the resin in there to make this structurally sound as well as last long time. But you're gonna see that you're getting a much more wood looking filled product on the lower end Trex versus, well, even some of the higher end Trexes or the Weather Shield. The Weather Shield also comes with a 50 year warranty. That's insane. And they make some bold claims like, I believe you can forever submerge this underwater and it won't soak up any of it. So long story short, this is kind of a lifetime deck at the age that I'm at right here. 50 year structural warranty, I think a 30 year fade warranty. This should last a really long time. By the way, if y'all live in the North Florida area, I highly recommend going and seeing Cashway over in Perry, Florida. I bought and paid for all this. They don't even know I'm giving them a shout out right here, but the guys were awesome. They ordered me in all the samples I want, worked with me and literally when I went up there and gave them my list and said, all right, order me all this in. They delivered it next day. They brought all the composite in, wood, nails, screws, everything. I didn't have to touch nothing. Hand delivered it right off the truck and I could get to work. So go check those guys out if you're in the North Florida area. All right, because this composite's so difficult to work with, I'm not even gonna try to set up my miter saw, which would give me perfect cuts. And you really kind of need that for all the 45s to where all these are meeting. But let me show you a method where you can cut this by hand. It's just too aggravating to take a 20 foot long board and try to run it across the porch to a cut station. Um, I really need a second set of hands doing this. Now the good thing about the composite is just use your normal blades. I've been using normal jigsaw blades, normal circular saw blades, and it's cutting this stuff beautifully. Although it does leave a slight edge on it and I'll show you how to take care of that. So I need to cut a 45 back this direction for this next piece that I'm installing. So a way that you can get a good cut, don't take your square and mark your line and try to hand cut this. Your joints will never fit together good at all. Since I'm avoiding using the miter saw right here, I like to take my square and use it as an actual guide. This will get you a nice, crisp, clean cut. You see how this nice factory edge of my Dewalt saw right here? That can run right along my square right here, giving me a perfect 45. Just gotta make sure you get a nice firm hold on it before you start your cut. Absolutely perfect 45. Now here's the problem with cutting with a saw like that. It leaves just a rough little edge right here. How well that'll focus, but you see all the little burrs and rough edges? We can take care of that real quick and easy. So always fold your blade out and we're not cutting here. You're gonna take the sharp edge of the blade and we're gonna run it along this edge, just backwards like that. And it'll just slightly peel all those burrs off. Now look at that edge if this camera will focus. Absolutely perfect. All right, now I like to carry my boards directly to the area and mark where I'm gonna notch my post, especially on long runs. The heck with all that measuring, physically putting it there and notching it out and marking it real quick just seems to work out the best for me. All right, now you can see why I built these holders. This would just flip and fall right off the deck if I didn't have those extensions down there. All right, so now I can mark. I'm leaving about a quarter inch gap around all my posts when I'm doing my notching. And that's because I'm putting post sleeves in and then I'm actually gonna put trim around the bottom of the post sleeves. So a gap allows for expansion, contraction, water to free flow and get the heck out of here as well as, well, I'm not gonna see the gap anyway. So let's don't make things too tight where we have buckling issues down the road. But I'm also gonna leave a slight quarter inch overhang of this board over the outside. It just gives it a nice, good look and finish. And you don't look back underneath and see any of the tape or any other issues. So I'm overhanging all my boards a quarter of an inch. All right, I'm gonna take my handy square. Just go from this way. And I wanna mark from an inch and a half up and remove that material. Here's another beautiful thing about these nice swants and speed squares. See all these grooves and notches right in here? Well, they're on marks. They're all a quarter of an inch. And I know I wanna take an inch and a half out of my material right here. 
So I've just made my line where I'm notching out for the post. I'll go right here to the groove for an inch and a half and just slide. You probably can't see it. And I just made a pencil mark for me to cut right out. All right, now we'll test fit everything. All right, we got a nice gap around the post. Overhang this about a quarter of an inch. So now I'm just gonna repeat the process. I only got one more piece to do here. Go to the other side and I'm just framing the entire outside edge. All right, so now what I'm doing is going along with this laser range finder right here that I got from Bosch. I swear by this thing and I always recommend it to people when you're working by yourself, this was an absolute game changer for me when I was building my house. Getting long shots all the way across here, I could do this one with a tape measure. But I'm shooting from this piece of trim, which I have the overlap quarter inch just like I want. I'm shooting across to the trim on the other side and I'm making adjustments. I'm trying to get everything nice and consistent and I'm paying attention to the way all my joints meet up as well. So I'm shooting across to the board, double checking, I'm getting everything within about a sixteenth of an inch because whenever it goes time to start cutting all of my composite decking that lay in here, I want it to be pretty much a repeat cut, something nice and repeatable. So now's the time to get the spacing perfect before I screw down this trim. And realistically what I could do, screw down one side, put all my boards in, and then screw down the last side as I fit it up to it. That may be the smarter thing to do here. This laser tape measure right here is a game changer. I mean, look at this. How on earth do I put a tape all the way across over there, almost 20 feet away? I can come right here, shoot across to that board. When I see it touch it, I can lock in my measurement. And I know I'm 19 feet, four inch, and 15 sixteenths. I'll just move down this board, getting everything nice and perfect. It's also worth noting, I'm using specialized color-coded screws right here that I ordered in. So it's got the same color head as the deck, and you notice this is a very unique screw. It's got an upside down pancake head and it's supposed to pull the composite decking, I believe, back over the hole. Not completely, but it makes the hole small. It's also got a fluted design, so it's gonna drill out. These screws are going to pull up because it's designed to pull the screw in, but you don't want it pulling composite decking back out the top. Once you get to this point, it actually reverses the flute. Looks like it's gonna push the composite decking material back in and again, allowing it to sink over the head. So you should have only a very tiny fastener. Don't forget because we're trimming out the very edge of our composite decking. We don't wanna see cut edges of boards. It looks really bad and unprofessional. I have to actually attach and screw down into this. I don't like seeing the screw holes either, but that's just the way it goes. I'd much rather see a nice finished edge all the way around then cut off edges of that other composite decking that's gonna have our hidden fasteners. All right, so now I'm gonna go along here with my square and lay out everywhere I want my screws to go. I think I'm gonna fasten one side completely in, leave one side loose so I can butt it up to my deck boards at the end and get the proper gap between where these boards meet the trim and then I'll fasten in this side trim right here. In my mind, that just seems like the proper way to do it to get my reveal to be exactly what I want. Now your manufacturer's installation instructions are gonna vary but Moisture Shield recommends countersinking this a quarter of an inch and taking the material that it pushed out and put back in the hole, hit it with a hammer, and it kind of does smush back to a normal color. But I'm not gonna do that because I could pick the material out even after I smashed it with a hammer and tested this theory. And whenever I get to pressure washing the deck, I'm fully expecting that stuff's gonna blow right out. So I was already prepared for a nice and flush screw look just like this on my trim boards. So we're gonna stick with this right here. All right, y'all wanna see something absolutely crazy? This is worth mentioning to you if you're doing an install with composite deck. To say this stuff expands and contracts is an understatement. I had no idea how much that it actually did. So it was just 90 something degrees over 100 on the heat index. We just had a heck of a thunderstorm roll through here. Popping lightning literally has just cooled it off probably 30 degrees. But here's the thing, before this storm hit, I went ahead and screwed all of my decking in and I had the joints beautiful, nice and tight. I've, did, I've been meticulous on this, did so much measuring. Now that it's cooled down, everything is wet and cool to the touch. Look 
at how much these gaps opened up. Insane, y'all. I had these tight. I was very proud of myself. This, this gap right here was perfectly tight. Look at this. Holy smokes, talk about opening up a tremendous amount. So there's two ways to look at this. One, I guess, fit and install your decking whenever it's cool. Who has time to wait? It's summertime here. I can't wait for cool days. I guess you can try to do it early in the morning, but you need to keep in mind, that shows how much it not only expands and contracts. So if you fit everything together cold, what is this stuff gonna do whenever it heats up and expands? The eighth inch gap that I just showed you expands back out an eighth of an inch. You're gonna have some buckling, twisting, warping. As much as it pains me to see these gaps and 45s opened up because I spent so much time making sure they were perfect, I think I better live with it. I think it's gonna be a good thing. First of all, I can't move everything again, and I think it's probably better for a gap to open up than it is for it to be tight when it's cold. Then the sun comes out and it goes to expand and you wind up with buckling and other issues. So keep that in mind whenever you're installing this stuff. I had no idea it expanded and contracted that much. That's another reason you better leave certain types of gaps where two pieces meet. 3 16 quarter inch gap between all of your deck boards for drainage and runoff and expansion and contraction. And when you butt two pieces together, this trim that I just put in, I'm gonna butt some pieces aside. Moisture Shield says it has to be a minimum of an eighth of an inch gap. And that's exactly what I'm seeing opening up in some of these gaps. So apparently they know that it's gonna expand at least an eighth of an inch. You're probably better off leaving a slightly bigger gap than that. So this was good the way that it worked out for the camera so I could show you. All All right, so let me show you how I'm installing this. As you can see, I have a bunch of support set up because this stuff is so hard to handle by yourself. You're definitely gonna need a lot of adjustable stands, sawhorses, something to deal with it. So first and foremost, these factory edges are not square, although I find them very close, but they're definitely not square. So every single board you pull off, go ahead and lob the end off, make it nice and square. Then, We'll run it on down, cut to the length that we need. All right, so you can see I've already installed several pieces. Let me show you the way I'm doing this. So I've went ahead and put in several of my supports out here loosely. That's because, well, we have to have a little bit of play underneath to put our next board in at an angle and then push down and hammer it in place with our rubber mallet. So once we do that, I'll tack a few more loose ones on the front of the next board we're about to put in. Then you go back in between the boards and tighten up the previous one. You don't want to tighten this up until you have some on the front because I've noticed it tries to push the board this way. But once you go ahead and loosely put these in, well, they hold this board into place. All right, so I'm putting my board in at an angle to get up underneath those brackets that are already uh, screwed in down there. Slightly tap it while it's at an angle and it'll work its way underneath. I'm also checking my gap on both sides, leaving an eighth of an inch. That looks pretty good. Now I'll take my fasteners. We'll go ahead and loosely put a few in to not allow that board to slip out. Don't tighten it all the way. All right, so now that all my fasteners are loosely tacked down in the front of this board, it can't slide this way, I'm gonna go back in between the previous two boards and tighten all the way down, essentially pulling these two boards completely tightened down, locking everything into place. I've also got my impact on a mid-range setting right here. I'm not trying to bust these plastic brackets.
still have to trim out underneath here, figure that out, but all the rest of it fit really nice and snug to the pool wall. Looks really good. So here we are with the completed deck other than one small corner that's right underneath the camera. We've got to travel this weekend, birthday parties, things such as that. So I've got to knock off, but I'll have that completed before we get the next video out. But I'm really happy with the way it turned out. There is no spring in this deck. It's nice and solid. And for the people that were concerned or curious about fasteners, my ledger board that all the floor joists attached to, before I put the rest of the decking on, I went back and put a second bolt in there. So I have multiple deck screws and half inch bolts. Plus I blocked underneath the ledger board to support it, added additional six by sixes. So it is an unbelievably strong ledger board now that's supporting these floor joists and there is no bounce anywhere. Don't forget, we got a full support right across the middle right here that's also sitting on another six by six to support the middle of the joist as well. So I'm expecting this to hold up to a lot of weight when we have, well, a lot of people out here. So some things that I have learned we're open and honest on the channel. There is two humps in the deck. I wish I had taken more time to really look at my floor joist and there, I must have had two that had really bad bows in them. Don't forget, you always crown to the upside with your floor joist. Do just like that, because that's where it gets its strength and eventually it'll settle out. And these two may settle out. You can only see it when you're way off and look back up here, but once railings and a deck box and everything else is out here, I don't think you'll see it but it's enough that it's bugged me the few times I have noticed it and it causes a little bit of a wave in two parts of the deck. I think I already feel like it's settling out some now that all this weight's on there, but that's something to pay attention to. The very edge is where it makes the picture frame. I wish I could have cut all the boards at once instead of one at a time because they're not perfect. However, whenever I put the rail in, bottom railing caps down in there that's going to hold the balusters it's going to go right over that joint i don't think you're going to see it but i'm just expressing these things that's something to pay attention to when you do your deck especially working with composite decking make sure your floor joists are nice and perfect to prevent that wave and if you can if you don't have all these six by six posts on the side i'd go ahead and lay all your boards out then snap a chalk line and cut every single one of them at once, then put your picture frame to it. It's just almost impossible to do that with all these posts as tight spacing as I have. Now y'all, that's just me nitpicking. Again, my first ever deck, I'm very happy the way this is turning out. Uh, overall, I'm happy we spent the extra money on composite. I'm really happy we went in 12 inch spacing. That's another thing I wanna caution y'all about. If you do composite decking, this one claims you can do 16. I thought I even seen 24 inch spacing if you had like two by 10s or two by 12s but read your owner's manual. There is no way I would ever do composite again without 12 inch spacing on my floor joists. When this stuff heats up in the sun, it gets really bendy, far more bendy than I was expecting. I don't think there's any way on earth I would go any wider than 12 because I think you'd wind up with, well, that wavy deck, especially baking in these triple digit days like we've had. Now the good news, we were running out here yesterday on this deck while it just got done pouring and storming. Even with just bare feet, we took our flip-flops off. I did not find this slippery. This deck apparently has good texture to it. It's got a bunch of little grooves in it and it just feels like you're not gonna slip and fall down. I know a lot of people are concerned with that. The other big concern, does this get hot in the sun? Oh heck yes, so hot that you absolutely are gonna need shoes anytime you're out here during the day. No problem for us, we're just gonna wear flip-flops out here. We are already prepared for that. I just did not want a wood deck that I have to constantly stain and treat or rip up every few years because the Florida sun bakes it. Composite's still the way to go in my mind. All right, I've rambled on enough. Um, overall, the experience was fine. It takes forever putting all these fasteners in. It's kind of difficult to work with 20 foot stuff by yourself, but if you get enough support, you can make it happen. I encourage you to get out and try some of these things yourself. Save a ton of money. I've just saved thousands upon thousands of dollars doing this myself. Coming up in the next episode, we're gonna get to railings and that's gonna technically complete the deck. Now, after that, we're gonna eventually build a sliding gate to go across here. That's gonna be a cool build. We're gonna run some plumbing and electrical up to the deck so we can hose it down. We can charge phones and plug in speakers and things such as that. Eventually, we're gonna bring you along. We might build a fold up bar top out here. We're going to put up a big umbrella. I'm gonna build a custom mount for that so we can shade part of the pool if we want or shade part of the deck. So we've got all kinds of stuff coming up. And don't forget all the dirt and nastiness you're looking at. We have a huge landscaping series coming up. It's gonna be multiple parts with some of the coolest stuff you've probably ever seen in it to finish off this section of yard. All right, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.